Now, most modern power meters and bike trainers are gonna be Bluetooth compatible, which means you can download an app from the manufacturer onto your phone and you can do the software updates and the calibrations straight from that app. I have got a Cork as my power meter and a uh, Tax Neo T2 as my trainer. So I'm gonna get the Cork app and the Tax app to do both of these updates. So we're gonna go ahead to the Cork app and then say search for power meter. You go ahead and select it and it's gonna to connect to the power meter and down here at the bottom it's gonna say firmware and I can say check for available firmware. I currently have installed version 10 and the latest is version 10. If we go back to the main screen, there's the set zero or calibrate. Now when I do the calibration, I wanna make sure I'm not touching the bike. I don't want anything to interfere with setting the calibration. So see that it passed and I record this value and I look to every time I do the calibration get roughly similar values. Um, if I get a wildly different number, um, then I know that there's something wrong with the calibration and I can uh, redo it. Let's move over to the trainer. Here it is loaded right in, Tax Neo T2, and then it gives me the identification number. I'm just gonna go up here and say update, and say check for updates. Your trainer is up to date. Now the Tax does not require any calibration, unlike the Wahoo, which would require a spin down. Um, but if you do have some sort of spin down or calibration needed for the trainer, I recommend you do that as well. And that's it, it's really that simple. So we've updated and calibrated the power meter and we've updated and if need be, calibrated the smart trainer. Now, a lot of people probably don't have a smart trainer. They have something like this, just a simple trainer. The main thing that you wanna be careful of with a simple trainer is to make sure that you're on a trainer specific tire. And you can always tell that it's a trainer specific tire because it'll say something right on it. This says Continental Home Trainer. This is gonna be a harder rubber compound and it's gonna interact with uh, the drum on the trainer in a more predictable way. This is gonna give you better resistance as you're riding and it's gonna improve the road feel. The main thing that you wanna be careful of with one of these simple trainers for an FTP test is you wanna make sure that it's predictable. And what I mean by that is when you get on your bike and you shift into a certain gear that you're familiar with and you understand the kind of power that's generally, you generally produce in that gear, you wanna know what the cadence is gonna be. You want it to feel familiar. And the way you do that is by making sure that the tension on the trainer is similar each and every time you put the bike on the trainer. So the way that I did that is on this adjustment knob, I actually put a mark on the, the handle and a mark on the trainer and then anytime I put my bike on this trainer, I made sure that those two marks lined up. That way I knew that for the most part, the trainer was at the same tension on the wheel. Now, obviously there's a whole host of other variables that go into it, but that was one way that I could ensure some consistency, which is really gonna be important for your FTP test. Now, the last thing that we need to consider is how are we gonna record it? So this is my Garmin head unit. This is what I use to record the data from my power meter during an FTP test. Back upstairs, because we gotta plug this into the computer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and connect the device to the computer to make sure it's fully updated. Now it usually does take a second for the Garmin software to recognize the device. Now, this does require that you have the Garmin Connect software, but if you don't have that, you can just download it from garminconnect.com. See, it recognizes Eric's bike computer right here. Syncing any remaining workouts or anything that's left. It's gonna check for updates. It says you're up to date. So there's a, a map update, but that's irrelevant. Now, if you had an update, it would automatically apply at this time, and so you could just let that download, and then it would just take care of itself once you turned your Garmin head unit on after you unplugged it. The last thing that we have to do is configure our recording device. So for me, with my Garmin, I go to the menu, and then down here at the bottom under System, then Data Recording. Now, this recording interval is the thing we want to look at. So Smart Recording is going to look for changes in your data, and then it's going to record those changes. One second recording is exactly what it says in that it will record data every single second. So that's the one that we want to select. Next, I like to look at the cadence averaging and power averaging. I have both of those set to do not include zeros. 
That way, if for some reason the power meter or cadence cuts out uh, during your FTP test and does record a zero, or does display a zero, it won't record that zero. And that's it. That's how I set up all my devices for an FTP test to make sure that I have the most accurate data after my test. This way, when I'm doing the test, I don't have to worry about potential errors or issues with the trainer or anything with the data, so I might have to redo the test later. I know that everything that's been recorded is accurate and it's going to be a valid test and I only have to do it once. So, hope that helps. Comment below anything that you think I might have missed or anything else that you like to do that's hopefully helpful to make sure you have an accurate FTP test. And we'll see you in the next one.